My name is Donnie Ray Albert. I am from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where I received my primary and secondary education uh, at McKinley High School, Reddish Street Elementary, and Louisiana State University with a, a bachelor's degree in voice and music. Uh, and upon completing that, I went on to get my master's degree from Southern Methodist University. From Southern Methodist University, I learned of a program called Wolf Trap. During my time at Southern Methodist University and also at Louisiana State University, I never really incurred any scholarship or knowledge of African American works or any of the uh, composers. And uh, fortunately, the Eileen Southern book on the history of African Americans and the music came out while I was a graduate student at Southern Methodist, uh, which piqued my interest to a degree that uh, ultimately led to my really being interested in singing professionally. Uh, because I really didn't know if I was going to sing professionally upon getting my master's degree. But I had a chance to go to Wolf Trap and experience uh, two years of apprenticeship work. Uh, learned about the, the Na Opera America and uh, I suppose I had heard inklings of uh, the program of uh, the National Opera Institute. Uh, but opera was basically something, a job for me at the time, uh, because I wasn't sure if I was going to teach, um, but I did have people who were in my corner as far as auditions were concerned. Uh, to go on and do major productions with uh, Houston Grand Opera, which led to uh, my performing the role of Porgy and Porgy and Bess, uh, having a chance to coach with people like Bill Warfield, William Warfield, uh, who ultimately all of us started to affectionately call him Uncle Bill because he was uh, that type of person to most of my generation and the generations before me. Uh, he took us under his wing and uh, told us stories. Uh, which were quite fascinating, many of which I, you know, I couldn't repeat uh, because uh, Uncle Bill was an interesting guy and uh, a wonderful singer, uh, a wonderful personage. Um, I've had a chance to actually sing at a, a program honoring him uh, because his oratorial singing was unbelievable. To continue on with my career in opera uh, led to my meeting many various people who were associated with the National Opera uh, Institute and uh, I was told about the things that were going on but I never knew that they had a legacy award until I was asked to uh, come and be presented with that award. Uh, upon hearing that, I checked into the background of singers that preceded me in getting that award and uh, was just astounded by uh, all of the many people that I had heard of, some of whom I had the opportunity to meet, uh, like Todd Duncan. Um, just to know the man uh, uh, and to, to know the two porgies of the 50s and, uh, and the original porgy was uh, indeed a, a thrilling, rewarding uh, effect in my life uh, and made me look up to uh, a class of man that uh, I really wanted to uh, emulate as I went on in the uh, profession of operatic singing. Um, so it was indeed a great honor to be selected uh, for the Lift Every Voice uh, Award. Uh, I remembered 
that, that particular day that I had to receive it, I was asked if I wanted to sing. <laughs> and uh, that morning in San Antonio, I woke up very hoarse. And I knew that that was not going to work at all. I think I had just returned two days prior to that from Europe. I had been singing in Europe for a while, and uh, I considered that to be my vacation, so I didn't want to sing. I didn't even want to talk. But as it turned out, I think I said a few words and uh, a few words of encouragement, I hope. And then t several years after receiving the award, I was asked to replace Martina Arroyo, who was the luncheon speaker at that particular conference, and I said that I had never replaced uh, a soprano in my career of being the cover for many roles, but it was a great opportunity. I had a chance to meet former colleagues and uh, people that uh, I was, we sort of came up in the business at the same time. So to see the number of singers, some of whom were still performing, to meet a number of younger generation people coming up and to hear the quality of singers participating and competing uh, was indeed an honor. And then to attend yet another event, I think that particular evening we were honoring uh, uh, Esther Hines, and uh, with whom I had sung uh, in the past. Uh, that was truly an honor. I, I remembered her, her words of encouragement and her acceptance. Her, her acceptance speech was far greater and more beautiful than mine. But we also had the opportunity to perform a concert for a group of black singers to get up on that stage that particular, I think it was the night before the award ceremony, was exceptional. I had the opportunity to perform um, the uh, aria from, uh, well, we did the duet from uh, Otello with a young up-and-coming tenor, Lemmy Pulliam. But I was just thrilled to hear his sound and to work with him uh, uh, that in that brief moment. But that whole evening, George sang, that George Shirley sang that evening, and then several other performers. Esther Hines sang that evening, and Esther said that she hadn't sung in quite some time, but she performed that evening and taught us all a lesson.